Hi everyone. My name is Dinesh Mudgil and I have worked as a technical marketing engineer with Cisco Security Business Unit. So let's take a look at VPN load balancing in action. For this demo, we are going to use NGFW1 and NGFW3 for the VPN load balancing. So to begin with, we'll ensure that the licensing is correctly defined for the devices that will be part of the VPN load balancing. Notice we have NGFW1 and NGFW3 both assigned the AnyConnect Apex license. Now we move on to the policies where we ensure that both the devices have common policies. So notice the NGFW1 access control policy has been assigned to both the devices, which is NGFW1 and NGFW3. We go to the remote access VPN and assign the configuration to both the devices. And we edit and go to the policy assignments and add the NGFW3. We go in and save this and we'll go in and deploy the changes. Now that we have the deployment completed, we go ahead with the rest of the configuration. For the VPN load balancing, member devices must have a unique pool. So we select a particular connection profile and edit the address pools and make sure that the specific devices have different unique IP address pool. So with this, we go in and save the configuration. And now we go in and add these devices in VPN load balancing group. So for that, we go under the advanced and click on load balancing. So within the load balancing, Firstly, we enable this toggle switch to enable load balancing between member devices. And then we configure group IPv4 address, which is a single virtual IP and the clients can connect to this IP. Along with that, we have communication interface through which the VPN load balancing members will be communicating with each other. And they talk on the default port of 9023. So once we click OK, then we assign particular devices within the load balancing. As we just added NGFW3, we'll go and toggle it over here and enable the load balancing. Additionally, there are some other attributes that we can configure. So priority gives a device a better chance of becoming director over the other devices. And then we have IPv4 and IPv6 NAT configuration as well. In terms of states of VPN load balancing member, we have two states, which is director and member. So we go and save the config and deploy our configuration. Now that the deployment is completed, we'll go in and navigate to the Threat Defense CLI to verify the configuration. So we pivot to NGFW1 and we go and run the command on VPN load balancing. So we see that the configuration has been pushed and then we see the status of the load balancing. So we notice that we've got two members in the VPN load balancing group. We've got NGFW1 which has the public IP ending with 81 and is a master. And then we have NGFW3 with the public IP of 83 assigned a role of backup. So now we open up a client and test the VPN load balancing. Group. So we initiate the connection, click on connect anyway for the warning. Now in this case, we select a group which performs certificate authentication and the VPN is established. So at the moment, there are no sessions on NGFW1. So we pivot to the NGFW3 and run the command again. And we notice that the client is connected successfully. And similarly, we can see the status of the load balancing cluster. So this output shows the total load where it tells that the NGFW3 has one client which is connected and the rest of the devices are ready to accept additional connections. That covers our VPN load balancing demo. Thank you.